The Toronto Blue Jays made a couple of roster moves today, so we'll break that down on this episode of Jays Digest, as well as a couple of positive progress injury updates. We've got Chad Green and Hunjin Ryu updates, so you won't want to miss what's coming up next. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. Now, we're coming out with another news vid today. Hopefully, the Jays snap their losing skid tonight in the TROP against the Tampa Bay Rays. But uh, they made a couple of roster moves, and hopefully this shakes some things up in the clubhouse because something has got to change. It's not exactly what we were calling for a couple of days ago, but it is a change nonetheless. Uh, So I think it's a step in the right direction for the Jays. Yeah, four moves all kind of corresponding with each other, and a few of them are surprising. And before we do get into it, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're around 25 subs away from 7,000, so it mean the world. But like you said, Peter, Blue Jays make some surprising moves today, and surprising in the fact of... About 30 minutes before this recording, Shai Davidi tweeted that Ernie Clement is in the clubhouse, and I'm not going to pump my own tires too much here, but I, I did call that in the last, I don't know if it was last video, but it was the last video regarding a roster move, and obviously he had that little injury, but clearly he's fine. And everyone thought that Kevin Biggio was going to either get sent down or be DFA'd, and I was you know a little bit excited because, you know, people have been, Twitter, Twitter line was excited. But unfortunately, or fortunately, if you're a Kevin Biggio fan, here are the corresponding roster moves. So Adam Simber is reinstated. He is active. Ernie Clement is selected to the roster. Hatch and Otto Lopez are optioned back down. So Otto Lopez got no work in. And Thomas Hatch obviously had a pretty good inning yesterday. And kind of the big thing here is that Mitch White is transferred for the 60-day IL. So he is he seems pretty cooked, at least right now. He seems very, very injured. But we'll get into Clement's stats here in a minute. But Peter, what are your initial thoughts on this? It's good to have Adam Simber back. Hopefully he can show something. But Ernie Clement is a guy who's hit really well and... Uh, in the minors and he's not he's not old um but he's also not young he's 27 years old so he's not really a prospect so what are your thoughts on this yeah adam simber is going to be a welcomed addition to that bullpen and uh, they need some innings eaters over there they they haven't really gotten that length that they would like out of some some of the bullpen arms so maybe getting simber in there for one or two innings of work at a time would be very useful to them uh but it also wouldn't make sense to dfa Kevin biggio and i know we rag on the guy quite a bit but he's still got three options left and yep. we're still able to send him down to the minors so it doesn't make for it doesn't make sense for the blue jays who are very strapped for depth right now to just completely release a guy i know he hasn't been playing well i know he doesn't necessarily have a future on this team but to just outright cut him when everyone else in triple a is not playing well wouldn't make sense so i guess um it, it checks out that ernie clement is coming up he's probably going to play that biggio role and and get some more every day at bats as opposed to to cabin but yeah he something had to change now i, I probably would have sent him down as opposed to you know, maybe someone else, but this is what the Blue Jays decided to do. So it is what it is, but I do think Ernie Clement is going to get a chance and hopefully he could spark this lineup that has been absolutely dreadful these past couple weeks and something's got to change here and I think it will tonight. Yeah, and again, Clement is not a really a prospect. He's 27 years old. He's played in the majors a little bit, as you can see here. Uh, had his debut in 2021 and played with Oakland last year and he hasn't really hit the ball well at all at the major league level, but like you briefly mentioned, he is a utility guy. He plays very similar to Kevin Biggio in the sense of he can play any position. He played a lot of different positions in the minors. And uh, here is minor league stats. You can pause the video if you want to see his 2021 where he shitted through a bunch of teams. We're going to be highlighting his 2023 season with Triple A Buffalo here. In 35 games, he has a 921 OPS. And you can see it there. Five home runs, 25 RBIs, hitting 328. And again, he's not a prospect. So, you know, they sent down out of Lopez because... I'm assuming they want to give him more regular at bats as he continues to, because he's not performing very well in uh, in the minors. So I want to give him some more at bats. And you call up Ernie Clement, who's a bit older and is performing very, very well to give you a spark. Because right now that Biggio bench spot is is essentially useless. So hopefully someone yeah. and Ernie Clement, like I mentioned in, in previous video, could be the uh, could be the spark that the Jays need, or at least try something in this uh, in this horrible stretch. Yeah, you said it yourself. He hasn't exactly torn the cover off the ball in his brief major league stints that he's had, but. At this point, anyone that's raking or anyone that is hitting the ball hard wherever they're playing is an upgrade over Kevin Biggio. And especially someone like Ernie Clement, who can play multiple positions. He's played shortstop, third base, second base, first base, 
and left field for the Buffalo Bison so far this year. So that's pretty good depth. Kevin Biggio can't back up at shortstop, and this is a good safety blanket to have in case Bo Bichette needs a day off, in case Bo Bichette gets injured, knock on wood. We don't want that to happen. That's the last thing that this team needs. But yeah, he is a, a nice safety net to have in the minors, especially for a team that doesn't have too many options in Buffalo as we speak right now. I'd still like to see Spencer Horwitz get his tr- get his chance, especially now with uh, Ernie Clement getting the call and he can fill that Biggio role. But uh, I, I, I'll digress. Maybe you, they want him to keep uh, performing the way he is in AAA before they give him his real chance. Yeah, and I think, obviously, um, maybe, yeah, going to keep giving him at-bats down there. And Clement gives you some more versatility in the field positional-wise, so it's a bit more of a seamless fit. But I agree. I want to see Spencer Horowitz up at some point because a lot of the bats aren't performing. And maybe even give Nathan Lucas a couple more at-bats because he you know, had a great game in his, yeah. uh, in his last game. But let us know your thoughts on that as we move on now to the – Hunjin Ryu and Chad Green injury updates and some interesting stuff here. And like you said in the intro, it's positive progress for them. And it continues to be positive progress as reliever Chad Green throwing a bullpen here at the trap. He obviously signed his two-year $8.5 million deal, still recovering from his Tommy John surgery. And Thomas Sal, shout out to him. He had some uh, some insight here saying, I can't imagine how great it feels for them to be surrounded by their teammates again. And it can get very lonely at times. So it's great to see them back with their players. And the final thing on Ryu here, John Schneider spoke on him saying his bullpen was impressive. And again, that it was cool that the entire pitching staff watched it. Honestly, at this point, we need desperate. We, we need a bullpen help. We need starting pitching help to a degree. We need some length in the bullpen as well. So both of these you know additions will be very welcome. Yeah, absolutely. And the one thing that this team needs more than anything is just to come together. Yeah. They need a spark plug and they need something to get them motivated. Whether that's Hunjin Ryu throwing 83 in the bullpen, whether that's Chad Green uh, looking good in his uh, in his rehab stints. I, I mean, they just need something to spark a run, to, to spark some joy into this team. Because right now they look upset. They look like they don't want to be out there on that field together and... It could be a mental thing. Baseball is a very snowball effect type of game. If one guy isn't going right, then it trickles down to the rest of the team, and especially when your stars aren't going right. So I think they need some positive news like this just to sort of turn things around and get things back on track because it hasn't been a pretty stretch, and it doesn't get any easier tonight in Tampa Bay. It never gets easy when you're in Tampa Bay. So hopefully this could spark some confidence and some will to win into this Blue Jay team. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, the new addition in Clement gives them a spark. And obviously, they had a great ninth inning yesterday. So that's kind of the, the silver lining of yesterday's game was their almost comeback. Maybe that can, you know, again, spark them into getting some some wins because we desperately need a win tonight in the trough with Jose Brios taking the hill. And Peter, like, it's yeah. been a rough few weeks, really, past couple weeks for the Jays, but they just need to get a win. And then from there, try to go on a streak because the games were going to be, we knew the schedule wasn't going to be easy. We didn't expect it to be this bad for the Blue Jays, but we knew this was going to be rough and it's going to even out towards the, yeah. uh, you know, the end of the summer here, but hopefully Jose Brios can lock it in tonight. And like you said, hopefully the team can come together with these positive updates and even just a change of scenery, getting Ernie Clement back on there and he deserves a shot and hopefully he can uh, perform it. Right. And I think we can both come to the agreement, Nick, that this is not a 500 team. No. This is not a team that should be playing this bad. There's something going on. Uh, whatever it may be, they need to figure it out soon because there's less games against your division. So each and every game means more than it did last season. And there's less time to make up ground. The next time you're going to face the Yankees is in September. The next time you're facing the the Rays is also in September. So you got to try to get within half games of them until then, until you meet them again. So Jay's got to figure it out here, and you don't want to leave the trop under 500 because that is a legitimate possibility. If they lose the next three games in Tampa, they can be 25 and 26, and yeah. uh, then we're really going to start panicking. And we still have a chance to win the series, so hopefully it starts with tonight because we are three and a half games out of a playoff spot, which is too early to care about that, but I'm sure it's in the back of some Jay's fans' minds. But that'll wrap up the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it and are excited for the uh, the new additions, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks.